Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm so glad that you're here. You know, our mission at Faith is to lead people to Jesus and elevate their faith. I trust that today's sermon would strengthen your faith in God and elevate your confidence for the impossible. God bless you. Let's get into it. I want to talk about relationship. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about relationship. And today I'm going to talk to the husbands, amen, and those who want to become husbands right then next week i'm going to talk to the wives and those who are planning on becoming wives and then the next week i'm going to speak to parents and children sounds good so you got three weeks you can't miss all right let's go to the our bible and um over the next couple weeks uh i'm going to be speaking you from three speaking to you from three places number one from the word and number two from revelation i've received from the spirit of god and number three from my experience amen because i cannot impart what i have not experienced hello i cannot impart to you what i have not experienced what if i give you information that's just what i learn and anyone can go on google and google a whole bunch of stuff and come and tell it to you and give you information right but i want to impart something to you that would be life-changing life-altering and that will condition you for greatness in life and in to 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 foster your relationships right uh the, valentine's is over sometimes oversold and it, it becomes more of an economic thing right where it's all superficial if you don't go to a certain dinner, you don't love me. If you don't buy me the right outfit, you don't love me. If you don't give me an expensive gift, you don't love me. Right? Who says it has to be a specific price? Get back to the basis. It's the thought that counts. It is the thought that counts. Because sometimes people give you things to flatter you. And that's why I tell you, celebrate it with your children. Who cares if it's pagan? Let me tell you, we ain't serving no pagan God. We serve Jesus, who is the author of love. Hello? So all of you who want to say, I'm talking to the people online, that want to say, this is a pagan holiday, too bad for you. Hello, you know what's worse? To not love. It is worse to not care. It is worse to ignore the special people in your life. Hello? Which one do you think God will be mad at you giving somebody a box of chocolates? Or with you not caring for the person? I think it's the last one. God will be mad at that. Amen? So we're going to celebrate and we're going to celebrate well. And I want to let you know that you can love well. You can love well. And I want us to grow in our love, and especially to the men. I want you to be sacrificial with your love. I want you to be patient with your love. I want you to be selfless with your love. And I want you to be the chief of servants. See, the devil don't like that kind of message. The devil don't want us to be servant, but Jesus... He don't even want you to know what Jesus... Oh, guys, this is blinking up here, so we're, we have an issue. All right? All right. Okay. It's behaving now? All right. God, you guys are going to have to edit that out, right? You okay? Good. All right. We, we have to be the chief of servants. Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you have to be what? Servants. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to what? Serve. So we get a mix-up, especially in marriage. Before you get married, you're the chief servant. Anything she asks for, you're doing it. Anytime she calls, you answer. But when you get married, Don't worry. Low me down a little. 
Where's Brother Robin? Hallelujah. Good. Aha. We're going to make it true. Tell somebody we're going to make it true. I'm going to make it true. Because my house is built on you. Amen? Right. Before you get married, you answer every call. Then when you get married now, your phone rings and somebody goes like, who's calling? Like, That's just my wife. Anybody ever seen that? Yeah. Before she was like, oh, excuse me, I need to take a very important call. Hi, boo. How are you? Oh, hey. yeah, yeah. But now when you're married, she calls like, what does she want again? Before that, you weren't thinking about again. You could not have enough. But now that you feel like you have gotten what you've been looking for, you take it for granted. And I want to deal with that spirit. I want to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. Yeah, because we want to love well. Amen? Want to love well. Hallelujah. Let's go to Colossians 3.19. And we're talking about love, right? It says, husbands, love your wives, love your wives, and do not be bitter. Oh, my Jesus. Do not be bitter towards them. You know, sometimes when, when, when we think about husbands being bitter, you, or, or when you think of the word bitter, you often think that a wife can more be bitter to a man. But here God is telling us, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. You know, what I'm going to share with you here, it's not something I found online. I'm going to share with you 18 years of experience. Somebody said 18 years is a long time. For you, it may not be for me, it's a long time. Because when I got married, I didn't have no gray beard. And then as I look back, you know, you think you're young and you think you look good. But then when you look back, Grandpa, I got the girl and my beard turned gray. That doesn't mean pressure. That just means that I have gray beard genes. But 18 years is a long time. So the, the word of God is instructing us. It says, husbands, love your wife. And when we look at that word love, it, it means three things. It means to be affectionate to your wives. Meaning, be warm and be tender. Men are supposed to be warm and tender. Consider Christ. We all boast how much Jesus loves us. We say, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. But can Sharon say, yes, Paul loves me. We sing and we boast how much God loves us. But God expects us to be the same way to our wives. He expects us to be warm. He expects us to be tender. Because we say, oh, the woman is the weaker vessel. So that if she is weaker, she needs your strength. She needs your strength. She needs your, your warmth. She needs your embrace. She needs you to be tender. She needs you to be understanding. She needs you to care her and bring her up. Because what does Jesus do for us? He brings us up. He, 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 he picks me up. He turns me around. He plants my feet. On what? I thank the master. You boast what Jesus has done for you. But now that same love that you have received, you are expected to pour that love back to your wife. We are to be affectionate, warm, tender, caring. We are to look out for the needs of our wives. Am I talking to anybody here? Listen, women, take it too, right? We have, if nobody don't want it, you suck it up. 
We have to be caring. We have to be tender. The next word means to be sympathetic or be affirming to them. You know, sometimes we do such a good job affirming the people outside of our home. I want to tell you today, we need to begin affirming the people in our house first. Look around at the gifts and the talents. Look at your wife. See how much God has put within her. Sometimes we just spend time and we say, you're not doing this. You're not ironing my clothes. You're not taking out my food. All the trivial, foolish things. And we're just busy poking the wife in the eye and suppressing the wife with our behavior. And yet we're saying, how come you're not able to do this, that, that, and me? It's because you have already poured hot water on her. So she is not able to function. Imagine I'm hitting you with a hammer every day. Hammer, 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 hammer. I'm not tender. I'm not warm. I am not caring. How can I expect to have your best? Be sympathetic. When you're sympathetic, it is marked by being kind or being showing appreciation love is not just a simple word oh i love you Mwah, and that's it love is work what did god do god found us in our sins romans 5 8 while we were sinners christ died for us he said we are to love like the way he loves us uh, let me just read one more, the Amplified for that scene. It says, oh, I don't have it here. It went away. Here, oh, yes. Husbands, love your wives, meaning be affectionate, sympathetic, and have selfless love that always seeks the best for them. If you love somebody, you ought to seek the best for them. It doesn't matter what mother-in-law comes around. You know, mother-in-law is a troublesome. They're very troublesome. Yes, but for the most part, mother-in-laws are very troublesome. Many wives and husbands do not get along because the boy mom cannot come to the place to give her son to another woman. But yet she wants grandkids. And yet she wants the boy to be happy. But yet she not cannot come to the place to release the young man to be married to the wife she want all the blessing that come with the marriage but she don't want to release him i want to speak to every mother here if you have a son let him go Amen. when he gets married that is let him go let him be married because what when he's happy you're happy a lot of times, when you look in and you, they are too happy, you're like, oh, I never got that. Why should she get that? So then you start to tell the son, oh, how are you taking care of she so much? Why are you buying all this stuff for her? You're spoiling her. Doesn't the Bible say that God loads us with blessings? Why is it wrong for me to load my wife? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing. Good thing, sir. And what he obtains? Favor. If that is the thing that brought life to me, that is the thing that, that adds favor to me, you better believe I'm going to treat it good because I want more favor. I want more blessing. I want more increase to flow my way. Let me tell you, wives got a lot of power. I'm not talking about what you think you're manipulating your husband. I'm not talking about that. I'm not tell, telling you the power what you got your kids. You know, the Bible says, if we don't, husbands, listen to me. Listen to me. All of you men, look at me. If you do not treat your wife well, your prayers will be hindered. Your prayers will be hindered. I'll show you from the word in a second. But let me go slow. And do not be embittered towards them. Somebody say, bitter is not nice. You ever drink something bitter? Make you go like that? Yeah? When we were little, they give us 
Karyla bush. Anybody know what Karyla bush is? If you're from Guyana, you know what it is. It's some vine that grows. Oh, you know bitter melon that sells in the store? Bitter melon is what we used to drink. Not the melon, but the leaves. They boil it and they give, it to, give you to drink. And at the end, they give you a lollipop to suck to make you feel good. Because when you drink that thing, it shake you up. It rock you. But it's one of the best medicines. Even today, it's one of the best medicines. But what? It is bitter. It is not good. So think of yourself. I should not make my wife feel when she sees me. I should not be bitter to her, but I should be what? Life-giving. I should be encouraging. I should be tender. I should be affirming. I should be selfless towards her. Right? So bitter is not nice. Bitter is not better. Sometimes the enemy, the enemy comes in and tells the man, you need to put pressure on your wife. Society comes and say, you need to put some pressure to her. Let bring her down to size. Am I talking to some people here? Yeah, if you go to the wrong place and get the wrong counsel, people are going to tell you all kinds of things to do with your wife. Here he's saying, you got to be a little more serious with her. You got to keep her in line. I don't know who made you the parent for your wife. Sometimes some men act like they're their wife's father. Hello? You know some men beat their wives? Hit them over the head? No, I'm talking to a fake church this morning. I'm not talking to a real church. Because what? You feel like you are now their God. And when they see you, they must bow down. Oh, holy one. Do not be embittered towards them. Do not be resentful. A lingering ill will towards a person having a quality of anger. Meaning when they, they see you, they see someone that is angry. No, when your wife see you, she must see someone that is delighted to see her. If she's having a down day, when she looks in your eyes, brother, you add life to her. You add hope to her. You had confidence to her. That she know that we're going to make it true. And Papa's got it. Because my man figures it out. You affirm her with your love. Ask Cher. Let me tell you. I tell Cher. Whenever there is any issue, you don't worry. You don't worry. You leave it to me. Yeah. Because it is my business to take care of you and the children. You don't worry. Leave the stress to me. Because I got a place. I check in my stress. I go to the king of kings. And to the lord of lords. The one that makes a way. Where there seems to be no way. Leave it to me. Now. You know men you're probably hearing you saying boy. Can't do this. I can't love this lady like that. I don't got that kind of love to give. Let's go to Philippians 4.16. We all know this scripture. How am I going to accomplish this task of loving well? Hell, lo loving well. Philippians 4.16 said what? Read it. Let's go. One, two, three. I can do how many things? Hello? How many things? I can't. Oh, 413. I got the wrong scripture. That's why everyone is looking like that. Thank you all. I can do all things. How many things? I can do how many things? All things through who? Who gives you the revelation of loving your wife? It is not the world. Because the world system says you could have chick one, chick two, chick three but the bible says you must have how many wives one wife there's no side chick in the kingdom oh 
Or is you going to get some side kick? I tell Cher, if I ever do the wrong thing, I want you to kick me. Because I don't want to do the wrong thing. I tell her, if you ever misbehave, I'm going to tell everybody. And she knows me. I have the mic every Sunday. And I could go on Facebook. I could go on Instagram. I could go on TikTok. I could go on YouTube and tell everybody. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. If you create avenue, he's going to walk right in. Why do you think I say all those things? It's because I don't want to mess up. I want to be held accountable. Hello? I want to be held accountable. If you ever see pastor going a little side, you just pull his coat say, that don't look too right. Because it's good for me. I don't care about you. And your ego? No! It is good for me! Because I want to live an upright life. The Bible said the man of God must be blameless. I want to be blameless. I don't want the sisters in the church to go around and say, Oh, pastor, winking at me. Slap me if I do that. (laughs) Serious? Because the Bible says, let brotherly affection. Pure. When I hug you, I must hug your purity. When I embrace you, I must embrace you with purity. You don't have to feel funny. Pass is a creep. And men do the same. When you hug a sister in the church, hug her with respect. Don't overstep your boundaries so everybody would want to come to this house. We got to do things God's way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Man, I can love my wife well because I get it from Jesus. I am well loved by my heavenly father. It doesn't matter if my earthly father didn't love me. I'm my heavenly father. He has bestowed. The Bible says he has poured his love within us by the Holy Spirit. Love is on the inside. If any man be in Christ, he becomes what? New creation. It doesn't matter the scars. It doesn't matter what community. It doesn't matter what what family you came out of. Now you're in the family of God. You are well loved. So now you have love to give. Now, you're saying, Pastor, you came from a home where you saw all this stuff and everything was good. No, I didn't come from no home like that. You know my dad? You know my mom? I didn't see these things I'm talking to you about. My dad was always there. Yeah, he's bishop. He's always consistently a father. But I never see any example of this. That's why I tell you, I'm teaching you based on revelation. What I have experienced. What I have encountered. Because one thing I said, God, I want to love my wife the way you tell me to love my wife. Why? And I'm not going to love according to how the world says or the system of the world is set up. I'm going to do it your way. Your way. Mighty God. Let's go. Continue. Do not be bitter. Do not be resentful. Do not let anger prevail in your life. Because what? Let me tell you. Men, women look up to us. Wives look up to their husbands. You might say you don't, but I am telling you way down inside, you are looking up to that man. Because you know God says, God said he is the head of the wife. We're going to get to all the other parts, but women look up to us. So now, when you look up to someone, it's because they are a good example. Who would you tell your children to look up to the drug dealer on the street? No. You know when children used to go to school, they used to look up to their teachers. Because teachers were a picture of example. uh, Of of success rather. They, They were upstanding in the community. So you go and you look up. Oh, I remember most of my teacher's name from like primary school all the way up. And they were all very strict people. They were all no nonsense. Today teachers want to be people's friends. No, they want to be kids' friends. No, 
teachers are supposed to impart into your children. So it's the same way husbands and fathers are to impart to their families. Amen? Mighty God. Ephesians, so you can do it because what? Christ says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can love well. Ephesians 4.31, it says, get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of what? All bitterness. And you know how you get rid of bitterness in a marriage? You talk about it. The devil tells men, you can't talk. You need to be quiet. Shut up. Zip your mouth. I want to tell you, I'm the biggest talker in my house. I talk, 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 talk. You get tired of me, that's your problem. Because I love you guys. I love you. And if you love somebody, you want to talk to them. Isn't that true? When you see them, you're so glad to see them. So we need to talk in our homes. Men, do not cave and be quiet. Listen, we're wired a certain way. We're wired a certain way to, to shut down and get quiet. And when, when the pressure, we, we don't want to say nothing. But I want to tell you to defy it. The Bible says be courageous, be strong. Be very courageous. I want to tell you, in your loving and in your marriage, be courageous. It takes courage to be a good husband. Because you're going to have to talk about some tough things. You're going to have to sit your wife down sometime and say, Babe, I don't like that outfit you have on. It's a little too tight. I love the curves, but I don't want the boys outside seeing the curves. It takes courage to do that. Instead, the other thing is I, you're driving in the car now. Babe, why are you not talking to me? I hate that outfit, but I'm not going to say nothing. Nothing. What's wrong? Mm -mm, nothing. Everything is good. What do you mean what is wrong? But yet, it is on the inside and it is killing you. Now, this woman went to the altar with you and said, for better or for worse. So here comes... Maybe the worst. And I'm going to tell you about it now. I don't too like the outfit you're wearing. And it make me feel a kind of way. And you know what you would say most of the time? Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say something? I'm telling you, 18 years of experience this is. I didn't just come up with these things. Pastor Sherwood said, why didn't you just say something? And I want to tell you, most women would be like that. Right? I'm not talking about the, the one sent from the devil. There's none of them here. No Delilahs around here. You got good women. Men, come on. Give the Lord a praise. And the men shout amen. Get rid of all bitterness. You're going to have to talk. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger. Outcry and slander. Do not go around slandering your wives. With other people. And the worst part is men get together with women and talk about their wives. Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You get together, you go. You don't go look for a counselor. You go look for a girl that's kind of giving you attention. You didn't hear? Share didn't cook today. I went home tired, tired, tired. And there was no food in the house. What is she? How will she help to change the situation? She might make it worse. Now, if you don't have the strength to go to share and say, why you didn't cook? Get your mother-in-law. Say, mom, I went home and share didn't cook. And not only today, one day is okay, but I've been coming home five days now and share is home. And the house is dirty. And there's no food. More than likely, mom is going to talk to her. Because she wants to make sure her house is in order. Now, if you didn't get you with mom, mom brush her off because she's a bad mother-in-law. Go to the father. Dad. Sherry's doing X, Y, and Z. Now, if the two of them don't want to do nothing... You have a pastor and you have pastors. Get one of the pastors and say, Pastor, I've, I've been coming home every week 
And Sherry's not cleaning the house. She's not cooking. And all she's doing is scrolling on reels. <laughs> so then Pastor Abby is going to say, okay, Pastor, let's schedule a meeting and let us talk about it. Do not just ignore the crisis. Because guess what? Those things, they heap up and heap up and heap up and you get bitter and then she get bitter and then anger and rage in the home. But if you will talk about it or find the right help, it will make a difference. Amen? We got to love well, church. We got to work on our relationships. We cannot just ignore relationship and expect things to change. If you're not doing good in a class, what did the teacher do? Teacher calls you. Young man, or why didn't you do your homework? And if you're not going to change, guess what? They call home. Because what? They care about you. So we need to care about our marriage, about our relationship. Let's see what, what Ephesians 5, 25 says. It says, husbands, love your wives just. Somebody say just. Somebody say just. As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So if you want to get married, marriage is a death sentence. I said marriage is a death sentence. Because what it says, husbands love your wife like Christ. Christ got killed. And all the men are like, oh boy. Yes, they're like, it is so true, pastor. But that's how it, it, God expects us to love. It's going to take all of us to be great husbands. It's going to take a killing of your will. When you want to do your own thing, and the demand of the family comes first, or the demand of your wife, you will have to give up your own will. You, you, you think Christ... All he wanted to do was just get whooped. All he wanted to do was get spit upon. All he wanted to do was wear a crown of thorns. No, not necessarily. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but Father, let your will be done. I'm going to be selfless. I'm going to give myself. If it takes my life, that's what it is to redeem my church. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And what? Christ went all the way and he died. Our love has to be sacrificial. If you love somebody, you're going to sacrifice for them. You're going to sacrifice some of your TV time. You're going to sacrifice hanging out with your friends. I want to tell you, if you want to be very well married, you can't keep a load of friends. Because you don't have time for them anymore. Too many men want to be friendly and want to be married. If you keep friends and you spend more time with your friends, you better believe when you come home, there's a long mouth waiting for you. You know why? Because you abandon her. You abandon, she's probably going to file abandonment divorce paper for you. Yeah, because you abandon her. What you did in the process, you rejected her. You hurt her. When Christ says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, you're doing exactly the opposite. You're leaving her and you're forsaking her. You know how many homes suffer infidelity because men are too busy and other men sneak in. The devil send men and they come in and they take their wives. Because you leave your treasure open to thieves. And what they did? They break in and steal. And some of you bring your friends even to the house. They don't got to break in. Bring the friend to the house and the friend get access to what was not supposed to be theirs. Our wives are treasures. We are to cover them. We are to protect them. We are to be there for them. Just like how Christ cover us in his love. Amen? Am I talking to some good men? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I should have preached both of the messages together. I'll get a better response. But love them like how Christ loved us. Christ gave himself up. He was sacrificial. 
You're going to have to sacrifice friends. You may have to give up a hobby. Because guess what? Now you have children. You can't leave all the pressure on the wife to watch the child, to go to work, to go do the laundry, and all of these things. No, you have to partner to get the work done. Because she did not get pregnant on her own. We have to be there. We have to be selfless. We have to cater to the needs of our wife. We have to be considerate. We have to be the satisfier. Hello? We, didn't Christ satisfy us? Come on, I, I'm preaching the word here this morning. When you met Jesus, didn't, get, didn't you get satisfied? He said, love her like how Christ loved the church. I'm not only talking about this kind of satisfaction. When men think about satisfying a woman, they think about sex. No, women need more than that. Women need somebody to talk to. They need a hug. They need a, a, a tender embrace. They need somebody to listen to them. They don't want cheeky bang bang. I don't know if I'm sick or what, but I talk to share on the phone all the time. Ask my kids. Meet them separately and ask them. They'll tell you. And I don't know what goes on the moment I leave the house, share's calling my phone. I'm like, woman, leave me alone. No. <laughs> yeah, what? It keeps you out of trouble. But number one, I love share. I really love share. I enjoy Cher. I don't get bored spending time with Cher. Because she is mine. And the Bible says, the two becomes what? One. So how can I hate my own flesh? How can I hate my own flesh? I understand that's her parents, but me and her are one. We're closer than her and them. You know the Bible says, not the Bible, sorry. The world says, this is a, a local saying. In Guyana you say, water runs in the drain, blood runs in the vein, right? Uh, and, and we use that in marriage. That is a lie from the devil. The Bible said, this is the mystery. The two shall become one. 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 Be selfless and sacrificial. And things are going to go good. First Peter 3, 7 says, Husbands, in the same way, treat your wife with consideration as a what? Delicate vessel. Or the, what, what, what we know the King James says, the weaker vessel. But he's saying the wife is a delicate vessel. The wife is a beautiful vessel. You know, when, when something is fragile and is being shipped, they have fragile sticker all over it. And they say, what? Handle with care. We ought to handle our wives with care. Listen, women, if you're dating a man and he's not showing you no care, run. Tell him so long. You sing the song to him. So long, bye-bye. Sing it to them because the word of all right, you can tell him, listen, the word of God says, you must treat me as a delicate vessel. And if he's not willing to obey the word of God from now, you may need to run. Because it says it here, they are the delicate vessels and with honor as fellow heirs of the gracious gift of life. As what? Fellow heirs. When you look at her, Know that she is part of the kingdom of God. She is an heir of God. I can do what I want, how I want, with her. Because God looks at how I treat. Number one, she is his bride first. Then she is my bride. So I have to be careful how I treat her. Because if I mistreat her, God is going to have something to pick with me so i have to be mindful how i treat his ear 
She is an heir of the gracious gift of life so that your prayers will not be what? Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Could it be we're not seeing our prayers answer because of how we treat the delicate vessel? Things that we've been believing God for is not happening because we mistreat what God considers, considers as his ear. Husbands, I want to speak to us today. Men, those of you young men who are planning on getting married, notice when you get into your marriage, the way you treat your wife is how God will hear your cry. The way you treat your wife, that's how God will... Didn't it say it here? Let's go back. Let's go back to the word. 1 Peter 3, 7. So that your prayers will not be hindered. Mighty God. Something that is delicate needs protection. Be there by your wife. Because you know what? We were praying for wives. I don't know about you, but since I was young, I wanted to get married. And I always think nobody would want to marry me. Yeah, I always... I always worry and I consider who would love me. Anyone ever had those thoughts when you were young? Yeah, if, is there anybody out there that will love me? And, you know, mind you, I was young and had all these scars. You know, this jeans is doing a good job. But if you see my leg, you might be grossed out. You know, I'm like, oh boy, with all these scars, is any girl going to want me? Right? But guess what? In the fullness of time, God sent forth a woman. <laughs> Right? With everything that I desire, everything I'm looking for, in the fullness of time. So, you guys don't distract me. Stop it. I don't even know what I was saying. I'm going to try to continue. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, right, my brother says what? Love. Love something and scatters the brain. There's something he said. Love just scatters your brain, right? That's what it did. Of course, she's still scattering my brain. I can't get it together. But yeah. Um, okay, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit. Shh. <laughs> they are delicate. Delicate things require protection. Now, fight for her. Defend her. Because she is delicate. Fight for your wives. Fight for your relationship. Pay, things may not be going the way you want it. But guess what? It, you have time. Tell somebody you have time. You have time to fix it. You know they did a survey. People who got divorced. And 10 years after they asked them the question. Um, are you happily divorced? Or you wish you stayed? And the majority says they wish they stay. Now, there are some exceptions where it is just ridiculous. It is outrageous. You're married to a sick man or a sick woman. Or somebody that refused to change and line up with what God says. Exception. But I'm saying these days people get married, over, uh, get divorced over trivial things. There is no unreconcilable differences. You can fix things, but it takes two to tango, and it also takes two to fix. One person can fix a marriage. It takes two to fix. It takes two people to sit down and have a conversation. It takes two to sit and have a, a I'm looking for a word, but I, it, it can't come. Have a, 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 some kind of a responsible or mature conversation. And sometimes we shy away from mature conversation. But fight for her. Defend her. We, as husbands, we are like Christ. He says like how Christ loved the church. We are to nourish our wives. When people see my wife, she must look so good. I want her to look younger than me. That means I'm doing a good job. But if Cher comes in here with bags in her eyes 
and looking all cast down and like the world is on her shoulder, that means I suck. That means I'm doing a terrible job. Because the Bible tells me to love her like how Christ loved the church. Don't God supply our needs? Don't God refresh us? Don't God renew our strength like that of the eagle? Then didn't he say, I'm going to run and not grow weary? I'm going to walk and not faint? That's what he gives me. So I'm supposed to give the same to my wife. Nourish, add, provide what is needed for her growth and her advancement. If she wants to study something, sit and talk with her about it. Oh, you want to go back to school? Let's work it out. Let's see how this is going to happen. Let us make a plan to have her accomplish her dreams. Don't throw water on it and do not just ignore and be like, ah, you're old. Ah, you can't learn that. Ah, you know your family, you guys are not too smart. Don't find excuses. Excuses are, look at me, man. Excuses are for cowards. I'll say that again. Excuses are for cowards. The coward makes excuses. The reason I can't do this is because of that and that and that. You find reason to not do what you should be doing. Am I pulling somebody up this morning? Yeah, I want you to love well. I want you to be successful in your relationships. Amen? And listen, sometimes it takes a little pulling of the reins to get things in order. Amen? All right, let's go. Number, it says cherish your, your possession. Number two, I just want to talk to you about two things that will hinder a relationship. Two things. And 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2 or 2 Timothy 4 verse 2. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2. And it says, 3 verse 2, I'm sorry. Notice that in the last days, perilous times will come. Verse 2. Men, chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. I'll stop right there. Two things that could hinder a relationship is when you love yourself too much and when you love money more than your spouse. Sometimes men, we get so caught up with money because we say, I work for this. And we tell the wife, you can't touch my money. You put the money above the worth of your family. I want to tell you, the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. If you're going to love money, you can't love your wife well. If you're going to love Money, you will not take care of your children because you're going to look at the money and not give them what they need. I want to tell you, let us not love money more than our wives. Money is made for you to buy things. Can I tell you money comes and goes? Yes. Yes. But you expect your wife to stick around. Not every part of your life you make the same money. There's some days you have a lot, and then there's some days things get tight. You want your wife to love you different? No, you expect your wife to stick by you. But when you have a lot of money, you're treating the money like God. And you say, I don't need you. I got my money. You ever hear people think like that? The young men today, when you ask them what they want to do, I want to make money. Because it's all about money. I want to tell you, no. That is the last day sign. In the last days, men will be lovers of money. No, we cannot withhold what is good from our wives. Do not be misers, but spend on her. Give her nice clothes. Give her if she needs jewelry. Make sure she look nice. Hello? Okay. I'll preach to the camera. 
Make sure your wife looks good. Make sure she smells nice. Make sure she has nice jewelry and she look well decked out. Don't value the money more. And the people online say, ouch. No. Ne don't worry, man. Next, year, next week you're going to have your wrong. Make sure you bring your bodies. We're going to preach the women down. <laughs> Lovers of themselves. We cannot be selfish. We cannot be selfish if we want our marriages to grow. Christ did not consider the suffering, but what he did, he despised it. He despised it. Meaning he looked at it and go, whatever. I'm going to go through whatever I got to go through to redeem these, my children. He despised it. And sometimes we're going to have to despise our feelings. Men, whenever your feelings get hurt, don't major on that. Despise it. Be like, I'm not going to succumb to you. I may have gotten hurt. Maybe she had said something to me that I didn't like. But guess what? I'm not going to be a little baby. And I'm not going to cry. And I'm not going to whine. And I'm not going to mourn. I'm moving on because I am strong. I am courageous. I have what it takes to be an excellent man. And I'm going to get up. I'm going to dust myself off. And I'm going to take care of my responsibilities as a man. We cannot be selfish. We have to be givers. We have to be givers. Give yourself to your spouse. The best gift you can give your wife is yourself. But we all want to give ourselves at 10 p.m. at night. But all day long, we're nowhere to be found. Give yourself. Give everything that you are. Even the parts that are not nice. Give everything. At least she knows you're trying to give her everything. Amen? So, two things that will hinder your relationship. And I'm going to preach the same thing to the women next week. Money and selfishness. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged your hearts. We also want to say a special thank you to our faithful givers and partners. It's because of your generosity that the vision moves forward. If you would like to partner with us, please visit faithchurch.life slash give. On Sundays, we have our Sunday services at 10 a.m. live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So join us there. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe so you never miss another sermon again. I'm Emily. Let's break the code.